by God. We're going to do something a little different today as we kind of shift gears a little bit. And uh, Pastor Jones is going to come and make a special presentation. But I want to call some people up here, um, Brother Bob Galloway and his wife, uh, Brother Steve, Miss Audrey, and Mr. J, Miss Donna. Let's see, I'm missing anybody else? You guys can come up here. My wife, Andres. Uh, Mr. Gio, of course. <laughs> And um, am I forgetting anybody? That's pretty much it. All right. <laughs> this is a powerful group of people that you are looking at here today. And, um, and Pastor Jones is going to come because he's going to do something special. He's going to officiate uh, the leaders of our evangelism team. These are the people that go out on a Tuesday that pass out food and clothes and water and present the gospel of Jesus Christ to those in the Christmas and surrounding communities. Can you put your hands together? <laughs> what started out as just two people has grown to this many, and we are expecting and believing God to expand the territories even more as we continue to go out and be effective in the kingdom. And I'll turn this portion of the service over as you put your hands together for Pastor Jones this morning. Amen. Give God the praise. Amen. We praise God. Uh, I remember uh, back when Pastor J.D. was here that Brother Jamie came in and his wife, Andrew, uh, Andrew? Audrey, they came in, and the pastor noticed that they was doing the outreach. And we talked together about it and decided to get cards for Brother Jamie that he would be represented by the church. And quietly, the two has been together doing this up to a uh, couple months, uh, a month ago, when everybody else joined in with him. And through the meeting that we had, uh, the Lord put it into the pastor heart that we should choose a leader that would lead this outreach team. Because everybody cannot be the leader all at one time. So they was appointed to be the leader of the outreach team. And we just want to present to the church our outreach team, which has now been confounded here at the Redemption Church of God. <laughs> so we thank God for that. And if the brethren have one or two things to say, he may at this time. I want to say thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Jesus, because it was just me and my wife. And I asked the Lord, you know, I needed more help. And <laughs> we got so much help now. It's awesome. It's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. You know. I want to thank the church for their support. And um, I want to thank the members of our group for their love, for their support financially, emotionally, and just um, allowing us, for Jesus allowing us to go out there and save as many souls as we can for Jesus. That's what it's all about. Thank you. That had to be me. <laughs> uh, it's a rare, rare opportunity. This is definitely a rare opportunity. Uh, you think about salvation, and sometimes uh, our minds just take us within the four walls of the church. But I just remember the scriptures and Jesus telling his apostles to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And I just thank God for this opportunity. And there's one scripture that reigns heavily in my mind. It says, 
how the angels rejoice when one's, when one's soul repents. And I thank God for this opportunity. It's a blessed opportunity. God's probably like me at times of giving in to missionary work overseas and what have you. But actually, we have missionary work right here. There's a lot of lost people, a lot of people, you know, in bad situations. You know, we only Jesus could save the whole world, but we can do a little piece of it. We can be part of, of it, what he's doing to his people. And we need to reach out to people around us that need Jesus, people that are less fortunate. One of the things this church does, which I'm really happy about, is we have a ministry for children, we feed them, we clothe them, we teach them about Jesus, we, you know, we have this ministry where we're going out and actually seeking the homeless people and trying to minister to them, because uh, if you don't show the love of God, you're not, it's not going to work. You cannot reach people and bring them to, to salvation to realize they need Jesus unless you show them love first, otherwise they're not going to listen to you. So, uh, I'm sure God's going to expand this ministry. Just put, God puts it on your heart to, to join us. Just jump right on in. We can put you to work. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you, God, for giving us this kind of ministry. And um, you, you allow us to work in us. And we give you all the glory, all the praises, all the honor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit working in us and please guide us into your word to preach and in the right way and the right thing and we need to be um, give um, the right thing and we need to also speak in the right way and uh, we need to your a uh, gospel the right gospel reaching them you know not just a you know you know they need to be uh, hit their heart so because those people you know most of those people I, I met a lot of people I was doing Uber, I get a lot of people because they are all, you know, addicted to something, you know. It, it's not, um, it's a spirit, it's an evil spirit. So we need to pray for those people, you know, if, you, if more than their food and uh, this thing, because they already got everything, you know, I said, you know, not us, you know, a lot of people are giving their food and everything. I've seen that, a lot of people. They, when I give some food sometime, they said, I already got the food somewhere else, somebody gave them. So we need the prayer to deliver all, all people. I mean, if you are not in part of this uh, ministry, we need the prayer to deliver uh, from their uh, addiction. Then only they can see that, you know, whenever we are free, uh, saying the God, they know everything. They said, hey, we know everything. You know, they, they just want to get something from us, and uh, mostly. So they need, they need to get change their mind through the right gospel, and we need to get the courage to speak. You know, we are going to be, it's not a, it's not a uh, simple thing. You know, we are going to a people having, they don't have any mind, you know. They are fully drug addicted. Some people have psychiatric problem. They don't know what to do. We don't know that. We have no, um, no, no, no uh, you know, nothing else. We, are, we only have Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and your prayer is more needed for this ministry. Thank you. Yes, we're believing God to continue to lead this group by His Spirit. And lead us to the right people at the right place at the right time. Uh, we, there was a guy who we met this, just this week who was a, used to be a fire marshal. And he was going through an addiction. And he just kind of just gave up all hope and started breaking down and crying because he didn't know what to do. He was without hope. But God set us there on his tracks, not by chance, but by his spirit. And we started this group. Brother Jay and Miss Audrey, just two people, which has grown, and we, the leadership team here, have decided to appoint Brother Jay and Miss Audrey as the leaders of this evangelism outreach. So, <laughs> praise God for that. We're believing God that 
if you want to join or you want to be a part or you want to donate anything to this ministry, you can see Brother Jay and Audrey, and they are giving their phone numbers, distributing Bibles, praying, and just doing the work of the Lord. This week we were ministering. We stopped at a big major intersection because a lot of homeless people were there. And when we pulled up, we stopped because they were there. And we started distributing food, praying. Some people said, do you have underwear? Do you have clean socks? Do you have toothpaste and toothbrushes? And do you have soap and toilet paper? And that kind of, when you hear those words come out of another human being's mouth, you think it's, you can't believe that they are needing these things, but they're out there. And the church has to step in and step up and do what God has called us to do. And we're thankful for people who are willing to go out. And each one of you has gifts. You have anointing. Each one of us has a purpose. Some can play and sing and some can preach and teach. But when we put it all together, we're all one body, one spirit working for the Lord. And so we're just trusting God to continue to do his work. The, the owner of the gas station came outside and she said, what are you guys doing? Because you're making my store look ugly. And this is the way that the world sees people that are broken, that are hurting, is ugly. And Jesus said that what you have done to the least of these, you have done it to me. And he said, if you feed those, you feed me. If you give them something to drink. They said, when did we do these things? Well, you could be ministering to angels. And I would encourage each and every one of you to spend some time and just invest in somebody else's life. And pour into them and be a blessing. Because the word of God says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So Pastor Jones, as they have anointed them, we're going to say a prayer over this group. If you will stretch your hands in this direction and keep them in your prayers this morning. Amen. May we acknowledge the Lord. Father, we thank you for this group of people whom you have chosen to do your will. We pray, O oh Lord, as they go forth, that they will go with the Spirit of the Lord. For you are the center of all things. And I pray that they would be like the woman that was at the well, whom Jesus filled with the Holy Spirit. And she went forth in the city to tell all men about Jesus. She was the first evangelist. And now, Father, you have chosen each one of these people that they would go forth and bring souls unto you. As the brethren said that every soul that receives salvation, heaven rejoices. And, Father, I pray now for this group because they are the groundwork of the church. They are the one who will bring those in that don't know Jesus. And I pray, Father, as they work in different, different communities, I pray that you would be with them. Guard them, guide them, let them lean not to their own understanding, but all thy ways let them acknowledge you that you will direct their path. And Lord, we just want to be so careful that we give your name, the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, if you are... Happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Can we just give Jesus Christ a hand of appreciation for who he is and what he's doing? He's turning lives around, making way where there seems to be no way. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you just for being here. You all look so lovely, so beautiful, and uh, Mr. Um, Michael and his wife Liz, their family, happy birthday to that young man, 15 years old. God bless you. 
Brother Morrow and your beautiful wife, all of you all look so good, and it's just a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. I want to say thank you to uh, Brother Israel for his, his uh, playing and helping us out so lovely with the music. Uh, he's a humble man, but he's a very dynamic man, and uh, I think Jesse slipped out, but uh, we are going to be starting to make a couple uh, announcements ahead of time because we just do the the sermons live on the internet right now due to uh, licensing and copyright issues with the music, but we have come together, the leadership of this church, we have decided to purchase the necessary license so that we can live stream our full service on the internet for those that are unable to come, and our plan is to start the full live stream in August, so if you uh, may not be able to make it to the service I know a lot of people right now are traveling and may be uh, not able to come, but you can view that online and we'll give you more information, but we just want to go ahead and let you know that that's the direction we're headed. Brother Scott is in the back and he was here this week. He's working so hard. Can you give him a hand of appreciation? <laughs> he has his beautiful wife, Miss Marianne back there. She's helping him out. Uh, Rachel and Brandon and they're doing a phenomenal work and they do need help he's he's wearing many caps right now um, but they could use some help we've got to run these cameras and we have to run the live stream and there's a it's a ministry by itself the media because some people can't come into the church but we can take the church to them as they can live stream so pray about it if the Lord has led it on your heart to be a part of that he can train you uh, Miss Cindy and Brother Jimmy, they're experienced in that area, and uh, uh, their son-in-law was here this week at church. You all know Jimmy Jones was here for a few hours this week, helping us get ready for launching our live stream. So keep that in mind. Uh, keep us in prayer. We're, we're just here to promote Jesus Christ and push the gospel. Amen. I want to ask uh, that you will keep Miss Katie in your prayers and continue to uh, keep Imani's mother in your prayers, who's at the hospital? Yes, Deshaun. Deshaun, Mr. Sean, um, and so many others that are hurting right now. But we know that we serve a living God, and He's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask, think, or desire. Uh, Miss Rachel has been putting up on the internet updates on what's going on with our church service, so you can check there for updates as well. And. I just want to say what a powerful time we had in the presence of the Lord last week, just allowing the Holy Ghost to have His way. We were dealing with the power of the Holy Spirit, and He showed up and did His thing, and the, the Big Mike and his wife and the whole family and Israel and Jesse, just, just letting the Spirit move and not quenching the Holy Spirit. Uh, when the Holy Spirit is moving, I don't want to get in the way, but just let Him do His thing. I know He's working on this church. And, um, and I wasn't going to share this this morning, but the Lord just laid it on my heart because, you know, leading, leading the church, there's a lot of things that, that take place. There's the, there's the sick and the brokenhearted, the evangelism outreach, Miss Marianne, they're feeding people on Wednesdays, and there's so many things. Um, but we do know it's hurricane season, and we're going to have a council meeting uh, we, we meet with the leaders and plan for things to come. We have some great things in store. We're trying to reconnect with the churches in the community to put together a Thanksgiving meal. Uh, we're trying to promote um, watch night service and just things that you all want to do, tapping into the Christmas community, the parades and stuff like that, and just getting involved and bringing Christ to the community. Amen. But we do have a leak in the building on the church roof and I've been dealing with the insurance all week and like I said I didn't plan on sharing this but I just feel like the Lord is laying it on my heart that uh, I, I spent hours fighting with the roofing companies and the insurance I had inspectors come out here and our deductible on the property is 5% of the value of the property which is almost about $900,000 and we have a leak that before I even came here, you all have attempted to fix and patch, but the building is still leaking when it's raining and you walk in through the front doors. You can't miss the big trash can out there. And that's uh, just getting worse 
over time. Now, our deductible is 5% of the value of the property, which is $45,000 just to put a new roof on this building. And you can talk to Brother John. He's the head deacon, the facilities director. This roof, if, if something isn't done, uh, it will just continue to get worse. And this is the temple of the Lord. And he deserves the best. And I'm not do, asking you to do anything right now, but pray that the Lord will give us the wisdom to move forward. I've talked with a roofing company, and he said he could put a new roof on this building for a little under 30000 which is a lot cheaper than our deductible. <laughs> All right? So I'm asking if you will keep those things in prayer. Keep the needs. Though you may not see somebody next to you. Somebody may not have a transportation to get here. Somebody may be sick. But please call them up. Ask them how they're doing. Big Mike was here yesterday leading in such a mighty way with his family. Now he's sick. The enemy wasn't happy with how the Holy Spirit moved. And when you are in the kingdom of God, when you're doing his will, the enemy shows up and he shows up. The Bible says he's going around the world seeking whom he can devour. And if you're in the will of God, if you're being effective, if you're being fruitful, he will attack you. And if he can't get to you, he'll attack your marriage. He'll attack your children. He'll attack your family. He'll attack your friends, your job. He will do whatever it is, whatever it takes to destroy your life. Miss, Miss uh, Audrey and Jay, they're going out, they're doing evangelism, and we're praying that the blood of Jesus cover them because the enemy is not happy that we're going out and winning souls for Jesus Christ. So stay prayed up. Stay depending on the Holy Ghost because he can give us power, and he sends angels to protect us. Amen? This morning, I'd like to share from the book of Job, chapter 1, and verse 18, as we get into the word of the Lord. Father God, I just give you praise and honor and glory. Thank you for what you're doing here at Redemption Church. Lord, that you will give us wisdom for your temple, God, that your temple deserves the best, Father God. And we know that you are more than able to do whatever it is that's needed to be done here. Lord, bless Miss Anna and those kids next door. Lord, that your Holy Spirit will be with them, that we, they will be raised up, O oh God, and taught, Lord, so that as they get older, they will not depart from your word, Father God. Lord, speak to them right now. Be with them. Be with those who are unable to be with us today. Miss Katie, Imani's mom, Mr. Shari, and, and so many others, God, that are broken, that are hurting, Father Lord. We know that you're the healer. We know that you're the provider. We know that you're the miracle worker, and you still are the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. You do not change, Father God. You were, you were here from the very beginning, and you will be here until the end. You are eternal, omnipresent, omnipotent God. And we just give you praise and honor and glory. As we get into your word, open up our hearts and our minds spiritually to understand your word and live by your word and walk by your word and preach your word and deliver your word and be a light in this dark world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Job chapter 1 and verse 18. It says that while he was still speaking, and they're talking about Job, another also came and said, now Job had been attacked by the enemy, and God gave the enemy permission to attack Job, and, and the enemy went in and started destroying all of Job's possession and everything that he had. And while he was were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and the next verse says, and suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the young people and they are dead and I alone have escaped to tell you. Now Job has lost his children. And then following in the next verse, then Job arose, tore his robe and shaved his head and he fell to the ground and worshiped. Job lost his possession, lost his family and many times when we lose things in our life, we are not sure what to do. We may make the wrong decision. But Job has led by example that when the enemy comes in and attacks you and your family and the things that God has blessed you with, the answer to that, to counter that attack, is to fall on your knees and worship God. It may not make sense, 
But it's what un un unleashes the power of God, the Holy Ghost in your life, and you will recover the things that you have lost as you begin to worship God. But he wants to make sure that you don't love the stuff he's blessed you with more than you love him. Then Job arose, he tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell to the ground, and he worshipped. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb. Do you believe that you came from your mother's womb naked? And he said, naked shall I return there. The Lord give and the Lord take it away. And then he says, blessed be the name of the Lord. In the following verse, it says, in all this Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. Sometimes things come our way and we start blaming God. We start asking God questions and saying, how could you allow bad things to happen to good people? Just because we are children of God, we are not exempt from torment. We're not exempt from torture. We're not exempt from going through trials and tribulation. But God has given us the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter, to take us through and be with us and guide us during the times of testing. And he says, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the text says, and the Lord said to Satan, where did you come from? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth, which is what he is doing, which is what he does, going from, to and from the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and an upright man? Now you can see why the enemy wanted to attack Job, is because he was a righteous and an upright man. So if I believe if, if the enemy isn't attacking you, I think maybe that's even a more dangerous place than if you were being attacked because that means that the enemy is okay with you. You're not a threat to him because you're just on cruise control and he's okay with that. He's okay with lukewarm, but when you start to begin to do the will of God, the enemy will attack you because you're upright, you're righteous, and that's the kind of man Job was. So the enemy wanted to destroy that because he thinks if he can destroy your family, if he can destroy your mind, if he can take away your job, cause you to lose your home and your car, that you will turn your back on God. And if, if that is what his plan is. But how many of you know, just like Abraham and Isaac, it was just a test. And we are put through a test sometimes, and we just have to fall on our knees and worship God in the middle of the storm. Just give God some praise. He says, who fears God and shuns evil, and still he holds fast to his integrity. And so I want to title the, the, the sermon that I'll share with you all for a brief moment is, Hold Fast to Your Integrity. Amen. Hold Fast to Your Integrity. It might be tempting at times to compromise your integrity. I know what I'm doing isn't the, the best thing to do, but it isn't the worst thing to do. But I believe God wants us to hold fast to our integrity because the Lord gives, but the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He says, still he says, hold fast to his integrity. Although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely curse you to your face. You inflict Job, and surely he's going to curse you. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand. Sometimes the God, God gives Satan some leeway to interrupt our life, but he only allows him to go so far because God is in complete control. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. The enemy can't take your life or do anything to you unless God gives him the approval. That's right. Amen. And if you're alive and you're going through a test, it's a time of trying. It's a time of your faith being tested. We come and we read the word, we preach the word. But when you're tested, can you live the word? Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And he took for himself a potsherd, which is like the broken pieces of, of what they used to make the clay, the ceramic, a broken piece of it, which to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. I'd like to ask you the question this morning. 
Do you still hold fast to your integrity when the testing comes, when the trial comes? Or do you turn your back on God and look to man or go back in your old ways? The enemy wants us to go back into our own ways, our old ways of sin. Adam and Eve were walking in the garden and he created them perfect in our own, in his, he said, let us make man in our own woman, in our own image. And he created woman out of the man, took the rib, as you all know. And then when Eve was tempted, the enemy said, did God really say not to eat of the fruit? And she, the enemy said, surely you will not die. And so she took the fruit, brought the fruit to Adam. And then when God said to Adam, what happened? He said, the wife you blessed me with. And he started throwing the blame. We have to take responsibility for our actions. So God was coming through the garden. They were, be, they were naked. And all of a sudden they took leaves to cover themselves. And God said, who told you you were naked? See, when we sin and when we fall short, when we give in to the temptations and we don't hold fast to our integrity, it brings shame upon us. And then they realize that they were naked. And when they were covering themselves, he says, who told you you were naked? And so the title of this text is, Hold Fast to Your Integrity. And I'll just give you three things to help you get through this season of testing in your life. Maybe you're going through a season right now and if you're not, be prepared because the enemy, like the text said, is going through and fro to and fro, seeking whom he can devour. He's not your friend. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your marriage. He wants, to he wants your child to be on drugs and hooked on something and be sexually abused. The enemy wants to destroy your life. And so if you're not being tested right now, he says, he that thinks he stand, take heed, least you fall. If you think I'm so upright and I'm so holy and there's nothing the enemy can do to break me, you better think again. Because he's seeking who he can devour. And if you, when you begin to do the work of the Lord and you read his word and he gives you instructions and you begin to obey the Lord, he'll, the enemy will bring things in your way to interrupt your mind, interrupt your life, cause you to drop down on your knees and cry and seem as though there's no hope. But we serve a God who died on the cross so that and his blood was shed so that we can be reconciled to him. And he says, you are healed because of the stripes that I took for you. So you don't have to fear what the enemy may do to inflict your life or cause sickness and disease because God is in complete and total control of your life. So when you're being tested and you're holding fast to your integrity, you got to be careful who you're listening to. Because Job, can you imagine your own wife telling you, your own spouse, your husband telling you, curse God and die? Curse God and die. Do you still hold fast to your integrity? You say you're a Christian, you go to church, you dress up, you look nice, you read the word and you pray, and look what, what's happening to your life. Just curse God, just give up. And they might come into your ear and tell you, maybe the spouse that you have isn't the best thing for you. And they'll try to bring things and disrupt your life and interrupt your life and then subconsciously start holding on to those things and listening to those things. But we made a vow to God when we got married. Better or for worse, sickness and death, till death do us part. We made a vow to God before man. And so people will come and try to interrupt you and destroy your marriage. Will tell you, abandon, abandon your family. They don't love you. Abandon your spouse. Abandon the church. Those people, those church people don't care about you. But be careful who you're listening to. Job said, naked I came in and naked I go. Doesn't matter what you do to me. As long as I'm a child of the king, not, everything is okay. Because I know that if I die, when I die, is appointed unto man once to die. After that, the judgment, I'll see my father face to face. So you can do whatever you want. Take my shoes and my car and my clothes. Take whatever you want, but just give me Jesus. Yes. And we have to be careful who we're listening to. Look at verse 9 in our text. It says, then his wife said, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. And verse 10, but he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish woman speaks. Shall we indeed accept God, good from God, and shall we not accept adversity 
In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. At times, we're tempted to curse God and say, God, I don't know what you've done. We're tempted to complain and say, why do you allow this to happen? Maybe you're on the road and, and you got an interview or an appointment and you, you get a flat tire. And you say, God, why, why, why can't I just, why can't everything just be perfect in my life? Maybe he got you a flat tire because he was preventing you from a destruction ahead of the road that would take your life away. But in all things, Job said, I'm going to worship you, Lord. I'm going to thank you in spite of what may seem to be evil. But he says he turns around things for good to those that love him. If you are here this morning and you love the Lord, he's working in your life. He's turning things around for good, for his purpose, so he can get the glory. We have to be careful who we listen to. Also, we had to humble ourselves. Humble yourself. Look at verse 5 in 1 Peter chapter 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to the elders. Younger people, submit yourselves to the elders. We're living in a time and day where the elders aren't being respected. But the word of God has commanded us to respect the elders. That's a command from the Lord. Submit yourselves to the elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. We have to be humble. Sometimes we're, so, we're too prideful, we're too puffed up to look somebody in the face and say, I'm sorry for what I've done. Sometimes you may not even have done anything wrong. Maybe somebody hurt you and betrayed you, said something evil or, uh, and about you and tried to dis Try to, try to hurt you. And we want to retaliate. I heard so many people say, I, I mean, even Christians, I've heard them say, well, I was raised to treat people the way I, they treat me. God doesn't say treat people the way they treat you. He said, love your enemies. So if somebody hurts you, it's okay. Love them anyway. Be kind to them anyway. Because when you give that blessing and that love, it comes back to you. If you give hate, It'll come back to you. Whatever you give, you get. But the Lord said it's more blessed to give than to receive. So give love anyway. He was being crucified and he said, forgive them because they, don't, they, they know not what they do. They know not what they do. I want, I want to have that same prayer in my heart when somebody hurts me. They don't know what they do. Forgive them, Lord. Love them anyway. But sometimes we're just too prideful. We say, no, well, I think they deserve to be treated the way they treated me. That's pride, but we got to humble ourselves when you're being tried and tested in the fire. I love the, the, the next verse of our text. It says, therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. He will exalt you in due time as you humble yourself. Did you know that? If you're pride and puffed up, he won't, he won't exalt you. The only way you can get exalted is by humbling yourself. The Bible says that if you come and you sit in the front row, and somebody asks you to go sit in the back, that it, was better than to, than it would have been better if you sat at the back and they asked you to come sit up front. Yes. And that's called humbling yourself. And you can look at that in the physical realm or the spiritual realm. Humbling ourselves. And that could be humbling ourselves as even just breaking down our, our spirit, being hungry for God, being open to the Holy Spirit and relying on the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we think we could do things on our own. We can make it on our own. Well, I don't need God. I don't need the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm a self-made millionaire. I can do whatever I want. Until something comes your way that money can't fix. Until the sickness comes your way that the doctor said there's no healing. Brother Bob Galloway gave me his powerful testimony that they told his wife she had six months to live. He left his job, retired, and stayed home to work with her. She's standing here today, sitting down, praising God, worshiping much longer after that six-month period. <laughs> Praise God. But I said, Brother Bob, I can imagine the doctors telling me that your wife has six months to live. He said, I had nothing that I could do. I, my money couldn't buy her healing. I couldn't go anything. It doesn't matter what my credit score was. I just had to say, God, it's in your hands. I trust you. You're the healer. You're the great physician. Yes. You died on the cross so that I could be healed. Yes. 
And as he began to be humble himself and praise God, just like Job got on his knees and worshiped God, in the middle of the affliction, God starts working and turning things around so that you can look back and say, look what the Lord has done in my life. If he did it for me, he can do it again, as the worship leader is saying, because he is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Give God some praise this morning for what he has done in your life. You're here today. You're a miracle. You're a testimony. You think the enemy wants you here today? He wants to destroy your life. He wants to take you out. He's not your friend. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Amen. Amen. Casting all your care upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. Let me say, well, God doesn't care about me. He doesn't care that I don't have a toothbrush and toothpaste and socks to put on my feet until a bunch of people from Redemption Church shows up in your community and starts doing things and being led by the Spirit of God, laying hands on the sick. They tell those people, we're here because God thought about you and he cares about you and he sent us here to minister to you because he loves you and he hasn't forgotten about you. Amen. And that is why he has commanded us to go into the prison, go into the street. He said, go into the highways and byways that my house will be filled. Amen. When they invited those people to the party, nobody came. One guy had to go bury his father. He said, let the dead bury their dead. One guy said, I just got married. I had to go be with my wife. Nobody showed up to the party. He said, go on the highways and byways. If you won't worship God, God will sober up some drunk, some drug addict to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to come and be anointed, to be lifted up, to give God praise and lead His purpose. If you won't do it, the, crowd, the rocks will cry out. But I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to let any rocks cry out in my place. Let everything we have that has breath praise the Lord. Come on, church, let's just praise the Lord this morning for who He is. Come on, church, just worship Him for who He is. He's worthy. He deserves our praises. No matter what may come our way, He is worthy to be praised. He is high and lifted up. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may help out. No. Who he can devour. Resist him. Resist the enemy. He may be enticing you to do something, to slip back into your old ways, into your old sin. Resist the enemy. Call a friend. Say, hey, I'm going through a, a testing right now, a trial, a tribulation. Find a mentor in your life. Find a prayer partner. Find somebody you can trust and say, I need help. Pray with me. Walk with me. Be with me. That's why we can rely and depend on the brothers and sisters of Christ. And to help us hold ourselves accountable because we have to resist the enemy. You might say, well, I know I'm weak in that area, but I'm just going to go over there and just look to see what's happening. And that's all it takes. You remember Curious George? Just a little bit of curiosity. That's all it takes. Before we know, we, we're into it so far. By that time, it's too late. The enemy has got us. He won't show you the darkness and the, the pit of what you're gonna, gonna fall into. No, he'll put some glitter on it. He'll make it look shiny. Just like when you go fishing, you gotta put some bait on that hook. The enemy will put some bait on that hook, but there's nothing good on the other side but death and destruction. Because he wants to destroy your life. Resist him steadfast in faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. That is his plan. Amen. He wants to settle you, perfect you. He wants to establish you. But in order to get the, the establishment, we got to humble ourselves so he, yeah. he can exalt us. Yeah. Some of us are too puffed up and too prideful. We just want to be exalted. He said, no, you got to humble yourself. Right. He said, the things you do in secret, I will reward you openly. He said, when you fast, tell no one. Tell no one because you've already gotten your reward. But he said, fast and go into your closet because I will reward you openly for what you have done in secret. He said, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. We got to be careful who we listen to. We got to humble ourselves. And finally, we have to encourage ourselves. You have to encourage yourself. 
the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag. David had lost everything. On the third day that the uh, Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire. And had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city and there it was burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Look at what's going on in the nations around us. People being taken captives. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and they wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you ever cried till you had no more tears to cry? Yeah. You think nobody knows, nobody cares, nobody sees you? God told the children of Israel that I have seen your tears, I have seen your affliction, and I have promised to rescue you. Do you believe that he is good at rescuing us in times of trouble? Yes, yes, the disciples were on the boat. Jesus was sleeping. That, every time I read that text, it blows my mind that he was sleeping in the storm. Jesus was sleeping in the middle of the boat, in the middle of the storm. The storm came and the disciples woke up, woke him up because they were terrified. Jesus says, why are you waking me up? I've heard so many different angles about why he was sleeping on the boat. But you may think Jesus Christ is asleep in the middle of your storm. But he says, if you would just have a little faith, you're, everything is under control. I can speak to the wind and tell it to be still. I can speak to your situation and bring you out of it. But the only thing that's stopping you from getting in direct contact with God is yourself. At times we think that, well, I'm just going to stay right here and fold my arms and I'm going to wait for God to move. And that does, that's not the way it works. Job got on his knees and worshipped God when he had lost everything. And when we get on our knees and worship God, things begin to change. The atmosphere begins to stir Paul says, stir up your salvation. Every day crucify your flesh. Yes. David and his two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed. A lot of people are distressed right now. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, zero. For the people spoke of stoning him. After all that David had done and led the people... And they had lost everything. Now the same people that he led turned their backs on him. Now they wanted to stone him. David didn't even, couldn't even depend on his own people. Your own people will let you down at times. Your own family. Your church will let you down at times. We're not perfect. I was just in contact with somebody this week from another church. And I, just by chance, it wasn't by chance because I don't believe anything happens by chance. And I ran into this guy that I used to see him at a former church. And I said, how are you doing? He said, man, nothing is, no, my life is falling apart. I said, what do you mean? He said, I have no car. I have no job. He said, my, my car broke down and for three months it's been in the, in the shop. And he said, I haven't even been to church. He was let down because he thought maybe somebody would have called him and checked on him after three months of not seeing him. All he needed was a ride to church. His car had been in the shop. He didn't have the money to fix the car. And it seems like everything is falling apart. And that's why we have to rise up and not be selfish. But he says, think, the word of God says, think of others more highly than yourselves. Sometimes we're just only careful about ourselves and our family and our life and what we got going on. I, me, myself, my but God says, reach out and touch somebody. Because we are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Jesus, he, he already walked the earth. He's coming back, but right now he's in the right hand of the Father making intercession. That means if somebody's broken, he needs you to get off your seat and go and meet with that person and minister to them as he gives you the leadership. And that is why he has called the church 
Not to be self-righteous and prideful and look out about our own self, but say, hey, brother, I'm calling because I hadn't seen you at church in a few weeks. Is everything okay? They might say, can you pick me up? I don't have a ride. I lost my job. You never know. But God can use you to be a blessing to somebody else. I love what he told Abraham. He said, I'm going to bless you, but I'm going to make you a blessing. Times we get blessed and we think, well, thank God I got blessed. But I think God blesses us to bless others. And the cycle begins to turn and the world keeps going around. If somebody came and put a check in your hand, not, not, a, not a check that, that, that uh, not a bad check, but a good check. Not a, not a check that bounce. You ever got a bounce check? <laughs> you want to go find that person. Where do you live? Hey. And I want a fee because the bank charged me for, uh, they gave me a fee, a fee because the check bounced. If somebody put a, a check, a good check in your hand, you have to open your hand to receive that check. And when you open your hand, they can put that check into your hand. But you can close your hand and say, thank you, Lord, I'm going to keep this. And you keep your arms and I'm going to keep it to myself. But what if somebody came and gave you a, another check? You can't receive it because you still have your hands closed. So we have to open our hands and give back what God has blessed us with. Because in order to receive, we have to give. But if we have our hands closed because we're holding on to everything, you can't receive. God can't bless you. you have, your hands have to be open and say, God, here I am. Send me, use me. How can I be used? It doesn't have to be in this church. It could be in your neighborhood. It could be on the job. You might see somebody with a need. But God is just saying, I want to, I want to use you to be a blessing. I think that the children of God should be an example in our community, in our job. So many people are at, 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 on their jobs, co-workers don't even know we're Christians because we talk like them, we talk like the world, we live like the world. I had some youths that, they, I asked them, why, why, you went to church, but why didn't you stay? This was a professor of mine at the school, and he said he went to a, ser a youth service, and the youth ministry at that time, they were playing the same music, the rock and roll, everything was the same as that he had when he went to the clubs, to the parties. So he said, why, why do I need to come to church? Because the church is just like the world. But God has called us to be different, to separate ourselves. He said, be not conformed to the world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. People, we don't have to go to, to the jobs and say, I'm a Christian, I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God. Your actions... The way you give and you bless others, they say, I bet that is a child of God. And we should be that example. Sometimes I hear people say, church people are the most stingy people. Business owners say they go to their house, they Christian expect everything for free and for cheap. I don't think God has called us to be stingy and selfish. The world should be saying, man, the church of God is a people who are filled with humility, who are filled with compassion, who are full of love, and they, they love their enemies, even though they have done evil. They don't repay evil for evil, but they do good. And we will all have to one day give an account for the things that we have done and the things that we have not done. Sometimes God could tell you to do something, and you say, no, I'm not going to do it. Jo Jonah was told to go preach. He said, I'm not going to do it. Sometimes we have to stop doing a sin, but sometimes God wants us to engage. Take part of what is happening. David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. In verse 7 of our text. That's okay. <laughs> they wanted to, to stone David after all that he has done for them. They turn their backs on him. In time, people will turn their back on us. But the word of God said, David, he got to a place where he couldn't depend on the people anymore. And he had to encourage himself in the Lord. And you will come to a place in your life, and I'm sure some of you have been there already, as Brother Jesse and Israel come up and, and, and lead us in an in altar call. 
There are times where you have to encourage yourself. The people you thought you could depend on are nowhere to be found. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. And when David prayed and worshipped the way Job did, his strength was regained. So we have to be careful who we're talking to. Humble ourselves. Don't be so prideful. You may not even have done anything wrong, but say, you know what, I'm sorry anyway. If I offended you. And watch how their reaction changes. Because God has called us to be the light of the world. And David began to encourage himself and his life started turning around. Have you ever felt broken and hurt and down and you feel like you got nothing left? But you open up the word. I love what I, I love this church because I see so many people open up the word and reading. And I see people here at prayer meeting on Fridays praying before the Lord for you, for your sicknesses, for your diseases. There are people who care about you, that love this church, that are on their hands and knees with tears in their eyes, interceding for this church because they love you. And when you get on your knees and pray, and you open up the word and you begin to read it, your spirit gets, your spirit gets lifted. And David had to encourage himself because nobody was there to encourage him. He had poured into the life of everybody. He had given all he had and there was nothing left for him to give and nobody was there to give in to him. Yes, but when we're facing our times of trial and testing, in order to hold fast to our integrity, we have to encourage ourselves at times. Will you stand to your feet this morning, church? You believe that God is a healer? That God can heal your body, your mind, your spirit? Whatever is going on, He is the mighty healer. As we sing this song together, just bow your heads, close your eyes, lift your hands to heaven and just worship the Lord.